Our last unit covered unique quadrilaterals, which were special four-sided shapes. The entirety of this unit will focus on the circle, a geometric shape without sides. The circle has some important properties that are related to many other subjects in math. Let's begin with how we define a circle. We know circles when we see them, but could you put words together to define what a circle is? Some might say circles are round unlike squares, which have sharp corners. This is correct, but not specific enough. Ovals, or an elongated ellipse, fit the same description, and we know ovals are not circles. The following definition makes a clear distinction between circles and other round shapes. A circle is the locus of coplanar points that are equidistant from a given center. There are four vocabulary words in this definition that are crucial in understanding geometric circles. We will save locus for the end and begin by reviewing coplanar first. We learned early on in geometry that coplanar points are all on the same plane. Obviously, circles are flat 2D shapes located on a single plane. If the word coplanar were not included in our definition, we would be describing a sphere instead of a circle. More on spheres in a future lesson. Let's examine the word equidistant next. You might be able to hear the words equal and distance embedded in the word equidistant. This is exactly what equidistance means. For objects to be equidistant from each other, they must be the same distance apart from a given location. Look at points P, Q, and R. See how both points P and R are three units of distance away from point Q? This means that points P and R are equidistant from point Q. Combining what we know about coplanar points and equidistance, let's review how these words relate to the center of a circle. Each point along a circle is an equal distance away from the center, the location that is in the middle of the circle. This portion of the definition is very important for distinguishing circles from just any ellipse. Without diving too deep into the properties of an elongated ellipse, the two points closest to the center of this ellipse are called covertices, while the two points furthest are called vertices. Obviously, not all the points along such an elongated ellipse are equidistant from the center, unlike a circle, of which all of the points along the circle are equidistant from the center. Which brings us to our last vocabulary word, locus. A locus is simply a collection, or set, of points that meet some criteria. We will revisit the definition of locus in the next lesson for a more mathematical definition. For now, Examine square A, B, C, D. Points A, B, C, and D are locations of each vertex. Points E, F, G, and H are the locations of each midpoint along the sides of the square. The locus of vertices of this square includes only A, B, C, and D. These points meet the criteria of being a vertex, while E, F, G, and H do not. Applying this concept to circles, we are looking for every point that is equidistant from the center. One way we can see this visually is by rotating a line segment around a given center. As the line segment rotates, the end of the segment that does not lie on the center makes a curve of points. Each of these points are all equidistant from the center. This set of points is what makes our circle a circle. And this set of points is called a locus. Hopefully this makes our definition of a circle easier to understand. Going forward, the symbol we will use when writing about circles is this symbol, which is labeled using the name of the center of the circle. For example, this is circle A. This concludes our lesson on the definition of the circle. In the next lesson, we will study two familiar formulas, the formula for the perimeter of the circle, called the circumference, and the formula for the area enclosed by the circle.